In this video, we will show you how to perform speed, distance and time calculations. You will likely get one set of three or four questions on this topic. Getting those questions right could make all the difference in terms of your scoring. So we're going to spend some time specifically on these types of questions during this video. Our objectives over the next five minutes or so are to teach you the speed distance time triangle that will eliminate any confusion as to whether to divide or multiply and show you some of the different ways you can be asked to perform speed distance time calculations. I guess that time is of the essence, so let's begin. First of all, what is this triangle that we mentioned? Take a look at the diagram on screen now. So, how do we use this triangle? Really simply, you cover up the value that you're trying to find. If we're looking for the speed, cover that up with your finger. And what do you see? Distance divided by time. Looking for the distance? Cover it up. You can now see that you should multiply time by speed. The box on the right shows the different results from using this triangle, but all you really need to remember is the triangle itself and how to use it. In the exam, you can abbreviate this triangle to D over S multiplied by T. Let's practice this truly magical triangle with some examples. Let's start with the most common type of speed distance time question you are likely to get on the test. This is the type of question that should take you less than the average 40 seconds per question that you have. Train A travels at a constant speed of 120 km per hour. If the train starts at station X and travels to station Y, which is 35 miles away, how many minutes will this take? First, let's deal with the pesky conversion. We can't have one value in miles and the other value in kilometers per hour. We are given the conversion that one mile is equal to 1.6 km. So let's multiply 35 miles by 1.6 to convert it into kilometers. 35 multiplied by 1.6 equals 56. The distance the train will travel is 56 kilometers. This video is not focused on conversions, but I've picked this sort of example to demonstrate the complications that can be thrown into some of the speed distance time calculations. Now it's time to use the triangle. The question is asking for the time the train will take. So we cover up time on our triangle. You should see that this means to find time, we must divide distance by speed. Some students will be tempted to do 120 divided by 56 because they are used to putting the bigger number on top, but I'm hoping that you won't because you'll remember to use the triangle. Distance divided by speed means 56 kilometers divided by 120 kilometers per hour, which equals 0.4666 recurring. Remember, this time is in hours. We must multiply our answer by 60 to convert to minutes. 0.466 recurring multiplied by 60 gives us 28 minutes. Therefore, option D is the correct answer to this question. Take a look at the table on the screen. It gives information about the average walking, jogging, running and cycling speeds of Sarah and Chen. The units are meters per second. Now, question two. After school, Sarah and Chen decide to get in some exercise along the straight path to the library. If Sarah decides to jog and Chen decides to run, how much farther ahead is Chen after three minutes if they are both moving at their respective average speeds? How did you do? Start by pinpointing what question it's asking for. 
In this case, we need to find the distance the two individuals have travelled. Then, use the triangle to see which calculation we must perform. Covering up distance, as this is what we are looking for, gives us time multiplied by speed on the triangle. Be careful though, the time is given as 3 minutes, but the speeds are given in metres per second. Multiply the 3 by 60 to convert minutes into seconds. 3 multiplied by 60 equals 180, so they both have 180 seconds to either jog or run. We know that Sarah is jogging at 2.9 metres per second and that Chen is running at 5.5 metres per second. We could work out their distances by using the triangle for each of these values, but there is a shortcut you can use to get to this answer a bit more quickly. The question is asking us for the difference between the two distances travelled, and there are no marks for knowing how far each of the students travelled individually. Since we know that they are both travelling for the same amount of time, we can do just one speed distance time calculation using the difference between the two speeds. 5.5 metres per second minus 2.9 metres per second is a difference of 2.6 metres per second. Use this relative speed to calculate the difference in distances travelled. We know the time, 180 seconds, and the relative speed, 2.6 metres per second, and our triangle tells us to multiply time and speed. 2.6 metres per second multiplied by 180 seconds equals 468 metres. Chen is 468 metres farther ahead. The answer is therefore C. We hope that you now feel much more confident in performing speed distance time calculations. The triangle is a really useful tool for taking out the confusion in such situations. I challenge you to memorise that triangle, but you won't forget it in a week, in a month, or even the next year. That concludes another UCAT lesson. If you like the strategies and content we're developing and want to see more free content, please leave us a like and don't forget to subscribe. If you have any UCAT questions, leave us a comment below and we'll help you sort it out and get your preparation up to speed.